And now I've mushed them all up. I'm going to strain some of the juice off that and then it's just going to go straight in with the hamburger and I've got myself the makings of shepherd pie. I know that doesn't look too pretty but <laughs> you're not going to see it anyway but it is all solid vegetable and that is the healthy part of the meal. And the reason I like to just cook up the hamburger first on my George Foreman is this was super lean hamburger meat and I think you can already see from the separation there how much of it was still fat so that's how much I managed to get out of it that once it's cool I'll put it in the fridge so it can solidify and then we get a much better idea of it right in the meantime I mixed everything up and there it is and I've put it on high on my slow cooker um, it's about half full so I put it on the medium level and I'm going to cook it for about mm, probably about five six hours what I want it to do is to just assimilate all those flavors that are in the vegetables and once it's done that then I will taste it and find out what I need to add to it but one of the things I know about cooking this uh, shepherd's pie, as I call it, or it's actually cottage pie because I'm using beef, not mutton. Um, when you're cooking something like this, the more time you give it to assimilate all the flavours, the better it's going to taste. So it's going to work while I'm out doing things today. That's what I love about Saturdays. Well, hello everybody. This is Dear Mama Sal on a beautiful Saturday afternoon. It is 19 degrees and I'm wearing a sweater, <laughs> a cardigan. <laughs> Duh! It's 19 degrees here in southern British Columbia, which we're... Make it 65 in America. I'm about to go over a lot of bumps, so there's one. It's the back road. Those of you who watch regularly, you know all about this road. And here comes another. Boom. I'm off to go and have my hair done, and I am about to do something that I think I have only done once before. In over 20 years of, or more, of, um, going to my hairstylist. I'm about to be late. Now, you wonder why late? Because, you know, I'm a time freak. Why would I do that? And can you imagine the shock that they're having? Because <laughs> I'm never late. I'm always 15 minutes early. I mean, like clockwork. And here today I'm late and you know you're probably thinking, well Sal, you've probably got a good reason. Nope. I have a very bad reason. I was sitting playing a stupid video game and it was against time and you know I was trying to beat the time. And time totally got away from me. I was acting like a teenager. I can't believe it. <laughs> anyway. I thought what I'd do is give a lesson for the day about what to do. Now, it's extremely bad manners to be late, and especially for somebody who earns their money, oops, earns their money by the hour. Like somebody who cuts your hair. Uh, and quite often they can't make up that time if they lose it, and they don't get paid by the hour whether the clients there or not they only get paid from the clients they see so it is extremely rude so what I did was as soon as I realized I was going to be late I phoned and I gave her the choice and I said please ask 
boy, if this guy dodges in and out of any more lanes, it's dangerous. Um, anyway, just asked her to make the choice. Did she want me to come 15 minutes late or reschedule? Now, I understand that I've been a client for 20-something years, and that probably gives me a special place in her heart. Plus, in 20-something years, I've only once before been late that I know of. Again, it was beyond, that particular time was beyond my ability. Uh, this one wasn't. This is strictly my fault. So, but I've given her the choice. She could choose whether I arrive late and she gets pressured or whether I reschedule. And I was quite happy to reschedule. Totally my fault. So she said, no, arrive late. Now, here's the next lesson. I'm not rushing. I'm not rushing to try and save time because if I rush to try and save time, I will probably end up taking more time because I'll be in an accident or something will happen. So I am driving as though I am on time. No shortcuts. No major speeding. <laughs> Just a normal Saturday afternoon drive. And I will apologize humbly, of course, because, as I said, totally my fault. And I just wonder how many of you would think to phone and let her have the choice. Yeah, take the extra three minutes or whatever it takes and make that call. Why? Then it's her choice, not mine. Right? She doesn't end up being the victim. And I don't end up being the victim. I was wrong and I admitted it and I gave her a choice. She chose to have me come anyway. We're good. I wonder if that makes sense to everybody. So now, what I will probably do, and I intend to do, is to tell her, cut my hair, but don't style it. So you're going to see me with much shorter hair, but no hairstyle, because I don't really need her to dry it and style it. I'll tell her to, you know, she can just throw a bit of mousse in there and just run the blow dryer over it quickly, but don't style it. Just anything I can do to help save her time. And I quite honestly am prepared to walk out of there with just cut hair and pay her the same. I reckon that will probably save her 15 minutes. Totally my fault. I can't believe, you see, I was busy as you will know, uh, because I'll probably put up a vlog, but I was busy making a, um, a cottage pie. for the week and that was good and then while I was just sitting waiting I thought I'd play this game and I actually had it set on relax mode so that there isn't any fight against time on it which is very relaxing and then like an idiot I actually went up a grade and told it okay you can time me now and that's where I got competitive <laughs> and I got very good scores on a number of levels and then there was this one level that I could not get past the silver. I couldn't get the gold and you know that pissed me off. <laughs> and look where it got me. Totally against character. Now I know some of you are saying Yeah, but you, you run late for work some days, Sal, and I do, and I understand that, but you understand that I actually am on a system where if I run late, I stay late, or I don't charge them for my time. And it's worked very well for everybody. 
So you know you look at it and you go <laughs> It's not the end of the world. But I will do whatever I can to put her back on time again. Because why should all the other clients pay for my my being late and then blame her for being late? That would not be fair. Not in my book anyway. Have a little word now and ask for the traffic lights to change as I come upon them. That would save me a bit of time. I've got a red one coming up. I think it's time for it to change, please. Can we change it now? No, no. I guess we're not going to have that sort of timing. Maybe for the next one it will be good. Yeah, there we go. Go move, people, move. Go on. Hurry along. <laughs> anyway, I will see you at the other side of this uh, with probably short, wet hair. This is dear Mademoiselle saying. See you later. Well, the good news is that I'm only eight minutes late, not 15, so that's a good start. And I really didn't rush. <laughs> See you later. Well, hello everybody. I just turned the camera back on so you could see that not only did she do my hair, but she also dried it. Wouldn't hear of not doing a proper haircut on me. <laughs> Which is really quite cute. And she actually didn't have a memory that I have once before been late. She said she didn't think I'd ever been late. And yes, she did think about that when I made the call, as I said she probably would. Uh, but she also knew that if it wasn't okay with me, I would never have made the offer to come in another time. So it's good to have somebody who knows who you are. And I guess it's called relationship, isn't it? When you know your clients that well. So, that's good. Well, it's a beautiful day and I feel like an idiot wearing a cardigan, but never mind. And what I'm wearing underneath would look stupid without the cardigan, so <laughs> I'm going to be hot, and that's okay. Now I'm going to go, just trying to think what I'm going to do here, okay. I think I'm going to go back to Walmart. I want to try and get that, that eye sh shadow that I couldn't find last, well I did find last week and ended up dropping. <laughs> So I'm going to try and get the right one this time and try and hang on to it. All right, everybody, I got caught here. This is Rowanna. And Rowanna and I are in a store called Laura's that I should never have come into because they got some gorgeous stuff and I will be doing a haul on it later. However, you need to know, Rowanna here understands body language and understood the client and brought me out stuff that she knew I was going to love and I hate that. <laughs> so, um, we're obviously going to meet again. I can't wait. I have had doing? so much fun. So, I am 26 years now in uh, the retail business. Um, I did start when I was two, in case you were wondering. <laughs> Just in case. Um, and I have a degree in fashion design and production, so I'm actually university educated to tell people what to wear. Um, you've got a special seminar coming? And I do. For I have a seminar who live in the Lower Mainland? Um, October 20th, uh, which is a Tuesday night, and we'll be teaching how to dress to your body type, what your body type is, how to build a wardrobe, as well as um, Where are we how doing your this? personality affects it. Right here in the store. Right here in the store. Morgan Crossing, Laura, 15795 Croydon Drive. Yeah, right. In case you get lost or across from the pet store. I'm not going to say what. <laughs> Um, if you is, call us, we do provide directions. 
I didn't. <laughs> this is my second attempt to find the store. Well, I'm this so glad open. you found us today. I am really glad.